When it comes to my miniature projects, my brain can sometimes be a little bit like Doug from Up. Squirrel! As soon as I see a bright shiny new idea, I go for it. And this happened in the captain's quarters. I had decided I wanted to take the 17th century part of this project and put it inside of a spaceship. So I just took off after that spaceship and totally forgot that I still had things I needed to finish in the 17th century portion. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on today. I've already removed most of the miniatures from inside of the project so I can grab it and start figuring out what exactly I need to do. Thankfully, the part I'm working on is a little bit smaller than the entire spaceship. See, <laughs> super small. <laughs> Couple of the things I need to work on are the fact that I have a missing door here. There's no ceiling on the underside here. And there's just a few other things that I need to do to really fill out this space. The outside's all spaceshipy though. Ooh. But let's give the inside a little bit more attention today. Let's get started on the ceiling. I am very good at forgetting ceilings even exist until the end of the project and then I'm frustrated with myself that I didn't even do anything. So let's just jump in. Feet first. Ceiling time. Because I'll be working on the ceiling, I first had to flip everything over. And this is why I'm glad I haven't done anything on the top yet because having a flat working surface is important. And I thought I removed everything except this panel still slightly falling off the side. This is kind of a dark area to work in, so I'll try and give you the best view that I can. This is the ceiling, and I'm going to be covering both sides of the ceiling in this room. And I had an idea. These are some resin balls that my sister created with a resin mold. Every time she had a little extra resin, she would pour it into one of these molds and add some different additives that she had. And I think they look like little planets. They're really pretty. So this has inspired me to try and make something that looks like a solar system on the ceiling of this area of the captain's quarters. Of course, it's not going to be Earth's solar system uh, because I don't have specific planets that look like Earth's solar system, but I still wanna add something that looks like the planetary pathways. So these circular grooves that go around the ceiling. In order to accomplish this, I first needed to make a pattern of the existing ceilings. And I do this with my paper method where I just add in bits of paper and tape it together until I'm happy with how it covers. And I took the measurements so that I could go over to my computer and try to make this solar system look that I'm going for. I'm using Inkscape in order to make a lot of ovals and circles, and I'm trying to make it look a little bit irregular and uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of pulling out ovals as I go. And then I decided to add these small circles. I'm not quite sure what they represent. Maybe it's some kind of map of the solar system. I, I don't know, because it's always rotating. So I'd, anyway, then I had to draw a large rectangle that would be the area that I would cut for both ceilings, because I do want it to look like the pattern goes from one ceiling onto the other one. And that's where my ceiling patterns will come in handy. I'll show you what I mean. Then I had the laser cut it out for me and it kept focusing on the rain that's outside my window, then the laser, but you get the idea. I had little bridges put into the pattern so it mostly holds together, which is going to be really important when I start to cut it apart. The patterns are going to lay right on top of this piece and then I can trace over them once I'm happy with the placement. My goal is to have the center of the solar system kind of center back of the left ceiling and then the other rings kind of going off to the other side. So now I'm tracing it on there really carefully. This is going to be a little bit difficult to cut because the page is already cut. And then I was afraid that I might mess up the pieces. So I went through and numbered all the rings just in case I tripped and all the pieces went everywhere. I would know a little bit better about how it all goes together. So now I can cut them out with a straight edge really carefully. And hopefully I will have a bunch of rings that fit into the ceiling opening. This is the test fit to make sure it all works. I remove the really skinny ring looking pieces because I want that to show through to the black ceiling that is already existing. 
I'm hoping by doing this it will kind of look like maybe this is a mechanism where the planets actually could move, uh, but they won't because I don't have room in this project to make that kind of mechanism, but maybe they look like tracks where the planets could potentially move. So once I have it all laid out, I decided to paint the edges of the mat board first. This way I don't have to get my paint really close to the finished walls that are already in the project because I can try to be as careful as I can and I will still somehow get a black smudge of paint on those cream colored walls. Once the edges are painted, I can go ahead and glue it in place. I'm just going really slowly and carefully, making sure I get it in the right place the first time. And then I can do a coat of black paint over the rest of the mat board. I want this to be a dark ceiling that I'm eventually going to lighten up with some metallic paint. I'm going to be using antique copper, which is the same color metallic paint that I used on the spiral staircase. I'm using a sponge to apply this and because I don't want any straight lines, I cut off the straight line edges first. And then I got most of the paint off with a paper towel and started dabbing away. I wanted to start light handed because I didn't know how much of the paint I really wanted on there. It did end up being kind of dark so I decided to add some gold metallic on top of the copper just in the center to really highlight the center of the solar system pattern. I know it's kind of hard to view at this angle, so I was pulling the project up so you could see a little bit better. And it was hard to get close to the edges of the wall. I didn't want to get too close. I didn't want to get metallic paint on the wall. So I'm going to be taking some black paint and feathering in the edges along the rotation of the solar system. And I'm hoping this will make it look like there's patina that has been growing along the edges. And so this is how it is looking at the moment. And I kind of, I kind of like the effect. I think it makes it look more aged and purposeful. Then I spent quite a bit of time figuring out where I wanted the position of each one of my planets and spreading out the colors. I still have quite a few left over, so I might be making some kind of globe or something to sit on the shelf, but I'm pretty happy with the location and I will be putting these on with E6000 because they're going to have to be defying gravity over the years. So I put on quite a bit and these do have a flat surface on one side, which turned out to be perfect for this application. I added enough E6000 to really hold it in place and then left it overnight to dry. Thankfully, it passed the flip it over test. Everything stayed stuck to the ceiling. And now I am so happy with this idea. I think it's really unique and really adds to this area of the captain's quarters, which eventually will be filled with all of the captain's model ships. So that's one more tedious project that's out of the way, but there's another one I need to do that happens on the top of the captain's quarters, and that is going to be the decking that would have been on the ship that is now concealed inside of the spaceship. I'm probably gonna speed through a lot of this just because I've made wood floors multiple times. Probably the more interesting part of this is gonna be the aging and adding a few little hints that this used to be the deck on top of a ship. It's also gonna be interesting working around the deck prisms that I've already installed. So let's get started. Here is the top of the project that I was referring to. It is supposed to be the top deck of the ship. So I'm now going to be covering this in so many little pieces of paper. I've done this multiple times, so I'm going to, for the most part, go quickly and not show you every single step. The code phrase for this project is tedious. Tedious textures. I had to cut all those little pieces around the deck prisms that I installed and all the metal that I put around the edges, but finally it was finished and I could go into my toolbox of essentially torture tools, I guess, and start scratching up all the paper because I do want this to look like old wood. I even got this old wire brush to kind of rough up the surface. After all of the texture was added, I went over it with some black Mod Podge to seal the paper. Now I'll be brushing on some layers of brown paint and gray paint until I get the look that I'm going for. So here is the finish I was able to achieve with just some brown and gray paint. I like the look of it. It doesn't look old enough, so I do plan to add some more gray paint 
and a watered down black paint once everything is done. But I was looking at this reference for how to make the wood look really old and worn. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be fun to put like some remnants of other things that were on top of the ship's deck here? Now that's gonna be a little bit difficult because I do have these deck prisms. So I'm gonna to have to figure out how to do that around here. But the idea is to block off areas that are less worn because there used to be something on top of the ship that's no longer there. It's adding to the story and the age of this part. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. To begin the process, I'm just using some paper to block off the areas that in my mind didn't see as much time in the sun and would not have had as much water wear on them. I'm just using a pencil to carve it out. I am thinking this is probably a storage room. I know it's not the entrance to the captain's quarters because the captain's quarters is below this. So it's some kind of storage area on top of the ship deck. I added in a few little architectural elements and then I added some circles that I thought could be barrels or some kind of storage area. And then a rectangle that I thought could be a chest that maybe held some of the ropes and other tools that they needed on the ship. Once everything was secured down with some masking tape, I sponged on some black acrylic paint around the edges because I do feel like dirt and some rot would have built up around the edges of these pieces. I do imagine that these were very secured down, uh, so I, I don't know. I'm just kind of playing with the idea and maybe an expert out there who knows a lot about ships is gonna say, this isn't anything like it would be, but in my mind, it is, so we're just going with it. After that, I added some more gray paint, and this is going to go over the entire floor because I want this to look like it has been in the sun a lot more, and the sun has dried out the wood and made it really gray. So this is going to go over every single thing that is not covered with paper. I still didn't feel like it was looking old enough with just the gray paint, so I switched to some white paint and then very lightly, I'm not pushing down as hard as I did with the gray paint, but just very lightly, I'm letting the white paint hit the highlights of the ship, of the texture that I created in the paper. And at this point, my paper pattern started pulling up, so I knew I had like limited time on <laughs> how much more paint I could add, but I really think this added to the age of this area of the ship. So now I could remove the patterns, and this was kind of my moment of truth, to take everything off and really get a look at what I created to see if I thought it was convincing. I left in the ASMR sounds for you. And to my surprise, I hated it. I stood there and stared at it for a long time and thought, this just looks like someone marked off a pattern and painted it. So I realized, okay, this there would be a lot more on this deck, a lot more evidence that other things existed. So I created a wall in the back with uh, the same pattern. I just cut out what I thought would be the thickness of a wall and added black paint to the back room that would have been like a storage room. So there would have been a lot of soot and dirt that built up in there, especially if they were using lanterns and things to light the inside. So I painted that black. And then I also decided to use a hand drill and another little spiral tool to make some large holes in the floor that I wanted to look like things had been bolted down. Obviously they can't just sit gently on top of the ship because they would rock back and forth. So all of these things would have had to have been bolted down. So I did this all around the outside of the wall. I did it all around the barrel shapes. And then I realized if there was a wall here, there would have been some evidence of some kind of two by four or timbers that were bolted down to create the inside of the wall, even if the outside of the wall extended a little bit past it. So I used this large piece of wood, laid it down where the wood would have been, and then used some watered down black paint to go around the outside edges. It made a messy pattern, but I really think it looks good, um, as if you know the dirt from inside the walls had kind of built up. Then I added more bolt holes inside of the wall, and this is the final result that I like a lot more. It was really interesting to try to think of what used to have been here and try to create evidence of something that never really existed. 
Now I can hone in on some of the smaller details such as the missing door. There is a door that has never been created. I made the upper floor door like three years ago and never made a door for the downstairs. And I remember after I installed that door, someone had mentioned, well, that door has a sun on it. Maybe you should make a door with a moon. So that's what I'm going to be doing today so that I can fill in the hole that's been in this project for three years. I was so happy with myself that I had saved this pattern from the sun door. All I really had to do was cut out a little moon graphic so that I could create this into the moon door that goes on the lower level. I didn't really have any letter system or numbering system, so I took a picture of the door that's currently inside of the captain's quarters so that I could try to match it as best as possible. So this just became one of those like puzzles where you just fit shapes, try to make sure that it looks right. I also went back and watched my video from when I first put this door together and past era left me a little advice to help with the process. So if I did this again, I would probably paint the base rectangle a dark brown before I glued everything on top of it, just so I didn't see that white poking through. Apparently it was pretty difficult to paint this door with all the cracks that were in between the pieces, so I'm going to take advice from myself and paint the base part of this door brown first. I got actually pretty impatient with doing this because I like to paint everything all at once. So you will see that um, I make a little bit of a mess here because I am too impatient and don't wait for the paint to dry all the way. Once I have all the shapes glued in place, I decided it would be easier to add glue onto the surface of the door than onto the back of the very complicated moon. So I traced out where the moon was going to go, added some tacky glue, and then I could glue it in place. This does leave a little bit of a texture in the open areas where the glue dries, but I think it also kind of makes it look as though those areas were carved out really delicately with a carving tool. So now I can paint over the entire thing with brown paint to make it look like a carved wooden door. And this is actually my favorite part to see this, all of it just kind of come together. It doesn't even look like individual pieces anymore. It looks like a solid wooden door. And you would think that I was pretty close to being done with this project, except... I forgot that the upper door and the lower door are not the same size. They are thankfully the same width, but not the same height. So it doesn't quite fit. I have a plan on how to fix it so I don't have to redo the whole door, but that's probably something I should have measured in the first place. Oops. I used a post-it to mark off how much more I needed to add to the door so that it would fit in the opening. And I'm just going to use another piece of mat board to create a longer door. I'm marking out how long it needs to be, how wide, and then cutting that out with my X-Acto blade. Then I can glue the original door onto the new piece and start building up shapes at the bottom of the door, trying to match the current design, making it look like I meant to do this in the beginning in the first place. So I'm adding on another strip of mat board and then I cut out a skinnier piece that looks like the skinny pieces that are running vertically just above it. And I'm gonna cut that to length glue it in place, and then I can paint it to match the rest of the door. And hopefully, except unless you're someone who watched this video, none will be the wiser. After three coats of brown paint on the lower part of the door, I was able to start distressing the door, making it look older, and I went back to my older video to make sure I was doing it in a similar way. I used some acrylic dry brushing and I also used some watered down black paint to make sure I got in the cracks and crevices and make it look like dirt had built up over the years. So that is the finished moon door for the lower level. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Once all the finishes had dried, it was time to install it finally in place to fill in this hole where the door probably should have been quite a while ago. I installed it with the same method I did for the upper door where I just applied some thinner pieces to the back and glued it in place. It's not going to be a functioning door. And at this point, I decided that I did not like the knob or the handle that's on the upper door. 
So I found these matching knobs in my collection. I believe they are pewter and I'm going to install those into both doors so they do match a little bit more. It was pretty easy to remove the other handle because it was just paper and then I had to infill between a couple of the pieces of mat board because it didn't have a wide enough section for me to apply the doorknob. So I just filled those in with some black mat board. This is so if there was any white showing that, uh, well, there, there wouldn't be any white showing because it was black mat board. So it was a lot easier to blend into my previously made door pieces. So just use the same brown to blend that in and some dry brushing with black paint to age all around. I installed the doorknobs off camera to make sure and get them in the correct position and I'm much happier with them now. So I think that's all of the structural components, like actual building things that need to go into this space. Now I can work on some of the more minute details that really start to tell the story of the interior of the captain's quarters, starting with the long neglected map table. I've had this miniature sitting in the captain's quarters project since very close to the beginning. It's actually a wash stand. I found these pictures of the wash basin piece that's supposed to go with it from eBay, but I don't have the basin and I've always looked at it as a map table. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to take something that maybe once would have needed to be in the captain's quarters so the captain could wash up and change it into something more useful. I wanna add a ledge to the top of the table so I can put a candle up there so the captain can actually see the maps. So I had to remove this small piece that I'm not quite sure what it used to hold, but it just had like three holes in it. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. But it left me with these two triangle ledges in the corners, and this is going to make the perfect place to glue on some extra pieces of wood to help make a surface to hold a candlestick. And now I just need to cut down my mat board piece that I've actually made three years ago or so when I was thinking about this project. And once I was happy with the fit of everything, I could glue it all in place and get started on painting it. I didn't want to paint the entire washstand because I am happy with, you know, leaving some of the original miniature. So it really does look like a washstand that's been changed over but I do want to try matching the wood as close as possible so it isn't what stands out about this piece. I do want the maps and the candlesticks to be what stands out. In order to age these pieces that I just painted brown, I'm using some watered down acrylic black paint and I'm just going to do a wash over the entire thing and allow that to dry. Again, this is mostly going to be covered up by a book, but if I do decide to remove the book, I do want it to look as best as it can. And here is the results. I do think you can tell a difference between the two surfaces, but if you're back far enough, really they look like they could have been together forever. And of course I couldn't help but add a book to the surface. This isn't a map book, but it does have quite a few ships, which the captain loves ships, so that might be a good one for the stand. And at this point I decided I wanted to add just one little bit of hardware. I often use these little paper handles in my builds, so I cut out a handle and then painted it gold, which I thought would look nice with the brown paint, and then stuck it on so it looks like a panel that can be pulled out, like up towards the captain, and maybe there were some other secrets stored away inside of this desk. So I had to also make sure that the book could still fit, and it does, and so I'm super, super happy with how this is looking. So of course I need to go ahead and add it into the upper floor of the captain's quarters next to the door that is freshly re-doorknobbed and I wanted to add this small ship that I made in a previous video as well. There's lots more to add to this space. Now that all of that is complete, here is one final look of everything we did for the inside of the 17th century portion of the captain's quarters. I do have to admit that I did not get as much done in this video as I wanted to. I am thankful for the things I did get done, like the ceiling, the door, the map table, and of course the top deck. The top deck probably took me the most amount of time to get done, but they are things I've been avoiding for literally years. 
In the next video, which is going to be kind of a part two, I'm going to be dealing with this closet, which is going to be dedicated to Centauri. And if you don't know who Centauri is, Centauri is the captain's cat. And poor thing has been pretty neglected by me since he's arrived. So he does need some attention. And also in the next video, I have some things that have come in for the captain's quarters that I'm going to be putting in place. And I also want to get some books on the shelves and things that have come in over the years. So I hope you'll stay tuned for essentially a part two of this video. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I had so much fun diving back into this earlier part of the project that I had previously just kind of forgotten, I guess. But it is forgotten no longer, and I'm glad about that because when I do sit down to actually write the captain's story, I do know that this portion will play an incredible role. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will like the video, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it and want to see more, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I think that is it. That's all the video has for you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Stoma! I don't know if she's gonna come say hi. <gasps> I see you. She agreed. She agreed to come and say hello. We need a mark on the board. We haven't added anything to the Fairfield board in a while. Fairfield. We haven't added anything to the captain's quarters board in a while. So let's do that now. You gonna help me? I've got a pink line for you, captain.